I'm uh, Norberto Arrieta. I'm a developer in DSC. And you guys know Michael Green? Good morning. I'm Michael Green. I'm the PM for DSC. So um, we want to uh, show you some of the work that we've been uh, doing in DSC, in the LCM specifically. And um, yeah, just give you uh, an idea of the direction that we're taking and take your questions. Yeah. Uh, so some of you might have seen in January, I published a blog post in the PowerShell team blog uh, about our plans for DSC. It was an update from last November. Uh, it's pretty detailed, so if there's anything um, you know, that you'd like to share with whenever you get back home and you want to share with anybody, uh, that's a good place to point them. It was um, a follow-up to that previous blog post from November where there was understandably some confusion about, okay, so if if we're gonna call this DSC core, what does this mean and things like that? And you'll see in this blog post, I purposefully just was referring to it as the new LCM. Uh, and those of you who've been using DSC, you understand what LCM is, Local Configuration Manager. Uh, I think since there's .NET core and then PowerShell core, then naturally whenever people heard DSC core, they thought, oh, well then this is only gonna work with PowerShell core. Uh, and actually what we're gonna show today is what the new DSC engine looks like. Um, it's very small, very robust, very uh, uh, quick to deploy and run. Uh, it's actually all written in C++, so it's not written in PowerShell core. That'll be one of the myths that we'll dispel right away. Uh, but we do have a plan on how we can use uh, resources that exist today and future resources written in other languages. Um, I guess the only thing I wanted to talk about uh, after, so I'm gonna hand off to Noberto. Uh, he's gonna walk you through, he's the developer for DSC. He's writing all of the code. Uh, he's a principal level developer, absolute rock star. So the best thing for a PM to do in this circumstance is just get out of the way and let you guys interact directly with the person developing um, the platform. Uh, after he's walked the demo, then we'll go through some of the timelines to make this thing open source. So that is still our plan. Uh, not gonna make it open source today or anything like that, but I will talk about our timelines and uh, what our expectations are at a pretty high level. So. All right, thank you. Off back to you. Um, high level, those are the points that I want to touch on. Um, I, I'll go through each one of those uh, with more detail. But uh, what we've been working on um, in our team is making uh, DSC uh, cloud friendly. Uh, we are focusing very much in uh, cloud scenarios and we are trying to address um, limitations that the current uh, DSC has. Um, as Michael already mentioned, we are focusing on making uh, DSC very lightweight uh, to deploy and to execute. Uh, we are adding support to run uh, PS code resources and uh, native resources. Native meaning uh, written in C or C++. Uh, we are moving away from uh, the uh, WMI OMI protocols. Uh, we, we are going uh, to use uh, HTTP, REST over HTTP. Uh, we are making, a, uh, we, to, today we have two uh, s source uh, code bases, one for Windows and one for Linux. Uh, although they originated from the same source code, they have um, diverged over, years, over, over the years. So we're trying to bring them together. So we will have one single uh, DSC that can work on either uh, Windows and Linux. Uh, we are planning on going open source and Everything that you see here, we are uh, using in internal Azure scenarios. So we are making sure that the DSC that we are creating uh, runs at scale and uh, it's easy to diagnose and um, it's very performant. So let's go to, to the first point, uh, lightweight LCM. The problem that we have today is that uh, for you guys to get uh, LCM, unless you are uh, DSC, unless you are running 2016, uh, you need WMF. So uh, if you guys have used the uh, uh, Azure DSC extension, you can see that uh, that is not very good because uh, if you want to use DSC to bootstrap uh, your VM, you need to install the extension. The extension needs to go download WMF, install WMF, uh, and then reboot the machine, which can take, uh, in the best case scenarios, five minutes. If you are running 2000, Eight R2 can take up to 20 minutes because we need to go and install WMF4, .NET, .NET and then WMF5. So that is just uh, 
not acceptable for uh, booting up, bo booting up uh, bootstrapping a VM. Uh, VM should be able to bootstrap in questions of, of uh, seconds or minutes. So now uh, we have made a DSC a very small package, a standalone, doesn't have any dependencies, or, or all the dependencies we can include in this package, and uh, it's very easy to install. Uh, over here, I'm using a 2012 R2 machine. Uh, it's blank. Only thing I did there is uh, copy my demo. And this is uh, the script that I'm going to use. Text is okay? Text size is okay? All right. Cool. So um, I created a copy of this uh, new package, put it in a zip file, and uploaded to Azure Store, uh, Azure Storage. So I'm going to download it. Um, if you look at the progress, this package is about uh, 60 megabytes, but that is because I'm bringing along uh, PowerShell and .NET. Uh, DSC itself is well under uh, 10 megabytes. It's very small. Okay, so creating the file. If you didn't have these dependencies, for example, uh, over here I'm bringing a, a PowerShell core. If you had already PowerShell core in your machine, you don't need those dependencies, so it's just a, a quicker download. Over here I need to bring those dependencies because it's, it's a blank VM, there's nothing there. So anyway, now it's uh, on my machine. I'm going to, uh, it's a zip file. I'm going to uh, uncompress it, also very fast. And then uh, we created this uh, new module, uh, DSC install, to set up the uh, uh, DSC. So let's import that module and install it. First thing that we see is that now uh, DSC is uh, a standalone service. This is the output of uh, get service, and um, it just runs uh, by itself. Uh, again, um, doesn't have any. You, you don't need to install anything else. Just download this package, start the service, and you're good to go. So that is the emphasis on, on, on the first part. The installation is uh, very lightweight, uh, very fast. Uh, depending on your scenario, you can go from like. Uh, as small as 10 megabytes to, I don't know, 60, 70, depending on what you need. The other thing that we did is um, some pieces of the LCM were, were written in uh, C Sharp. And there are some scenarios uh, in, uh, in Azure. For example, um, today we are using DSC in the Azure hosts themselves, not, not only on the Azure VMs, but also on the Azure hosts. And on those hosts, uh, there's a requirement not to have dependencies on managed code. So now we have moved all the, all, all the um, C Sharp code. Now it's uh, been rewritten in C++. That makes, um, again, uh, DSC uh, just uh, self-contained, no, no dependencies. We removed the dependency on WMF, the dependency on .NET. Your, your workload may still have dependencies on .NET, but uh, LCM itself uh, uh, doesn't. So now, and uh, we are running as a service. Now let's talk about uh, DSC resources. I'm going to use this um, very simple configuration. Uh, it's just running a script. It doesn't do anything useful. Uh, as part of that script, I'm now putting a verbose message uh, with the uh, PS version table and nothing else. It's just to show you uh, the. Uh, uh, okay. Yep. Oh, sh okay. Anyway. <laughs> The, sorry, yeah. Uh, stop it might kill the download and stuff. At least it'll uh, stop executing at the Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. F F8, not F5. There we go. So anyway, now I uh, got a configuration. I'm producing a uh, MOV file. 
there we are. As part of uh, that uh, download that we did, uh, we have uh, a new module uh, with a, a new set of commandlets. Uh, new in the sense that we have to change the uh, implementation, but we are trying to keep the uh, same uh, interface so that your, you guys, uh, your current workloads has, have uh, as small an impact uh, as possible. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a new implementation of uh, our commandlets. Uh, so now we run that configuration. I am so sorry. I tried this. Morning. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, it it created the uh, it created the uh, um, MOF. I'm sorry. Did I? Did I? Import module. Oh, there it goes. Thank you. And um, as you can see, that guy is running. Um, that 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 script is running uh, PS PS car. So. Um, as Michael uh, mentioned before, uh, at, at the beginning there was some confusion. I mean, uh, PowerShell is moving uh, towards um, PS Core, and there was some confusion about what was happening with DSC. Um, we are adding support for um, a new kind of resources. We will continue supporting uh, Windows PowerShell resources, the, the resources that you use today. If you are using uh, the uh, Linux implementation, we will continue to support Python. Uh, but on top of that, we are adding support for uh, PowerShell Core and uh, for native uh, resources. Um, as a small parenthesis, uh, we are dropping support for uh, WMI resources, but we believe uh, you guys are not affected. Uh, Initially, uh, DSC was all, all built on, uh, on top of WMI, um, the Windows Management Infrastructure. And we created one resource, the file resource, that is implemented uh, using WMI. Uh, but we believe uh, nobody other than us are doing WMI providers. So we, since we are moving away from uh, WMI, uh, we are dropping support for, for WMI providers. And we will rewrite a file in uh, uh, in PowerShell itself, probably. Um, l l l log is a, a, a yeah, it's a, a very weird resource. It's implemented in LCM itself. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, yep. Yeah. There, there, there's no actual uh, module containing log. It's uh, it's in the engine itself. So. Um, With, with, with this, uh, what we're trying to attempt is that uh, since we're going uh, cross-plat, uh, this same guy is running on um, Windows and Linux, can run on Windows and Linux. And uh, PS Core can do the same. Uh, this, is, this opens the door to uh, writing uh, new DSC resources using PS Core that would run both on Windows uh, and Linux. Or um, again, uh, we have some scenarios where performance is critical, no dependencies on .NET. In that case, uh, we open the possibility to write the DSC resources in C++ itself. So you could have a, an entire native platform, everything C++, no external dependencies, very small, very performant. If you happen to need a DSC for a very uh, uh, performance scenarios. For, for, for example, we use it to uh, perform inventory of resources in some of uh, our Azure uh, applications. 
and that needs to be run, to run uh, extremely fast. So we go for performance there, everything native. I, uh, I forgot to tell you guys at the beginning that uh, all of this is work in progress. Take it a little bit with a grain of salt. There may be changes, but uh, the overall direction is uh, what's important here. Um, all of this, we are still working uh, details. So uh, the next thing is uh, the address API. So that, that, that command that, um, that I ran there um, in my script, is actually uh, just using uh, invoke web uh, request to a local endpoint. Uh, the LCM is running in that uh, endpoint uh, using HTTPS and uh, uh, Windows integrated authentication. So um, the uh, uh, authentication part is transparent here. But now uh, we receive external feedback that um, using uh, DSC and um, try to integrate with DSC is hard because we use WMIS protocol and we use MOF as the uh, representation of uh, configurations. So uh, slowly we are trying to, uh, to get more open and go for um, a RESTful API with uh, JSON. Uh, that would also uh, facilitate, for example, writing uh, Azure templates with Shared JSON. Uh, that would facilitate the um, uh, authoring of DSC configurations because they could be inline in the, uh, in the Azure template itself. Uh, this is very early work. Uh, we have a long way to go before we can replace, not replace, because we will never drop support for MOF. We need to support uh, to be backwards, backwards compatible, but have an alternate way to represent uh, configurations using JSON. So anyway, once we are um, at rest, that opens the possibility to new integration points. Um, this is a very uh, simplistic example again, but uh, I don't know. Now, you could use uh, the browser to query for uh, meta configuration. Uh, you, you can see how early our work is. Everything is badly formatted. But the uh, meta configuration is there. So um, again, why are we doing this? Um, we want to remove the dependency from WMI, OMI. Uh, using WMI itself creates uh, some problems because to, to use the full functionality of DSC, uh, even if DSC itself didn't depend on, on WMF, WMI does. So we, 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 uh, that was part of the motivation. Uh, the other, th the other Motivation is that uh, on, on Linux, we have uh, um, an open implementation of WMI. We have uh, o OMI. And OMI on Linux is not on parity with uh, WMI on Windows. Uh, for example, if, if, if you have used uh, DSC for Linux, uh, there's no output from the resources. Uh, on, on Windows, you run a resource, and every verbose message shows what the resource is doing. And that doesn't happen in, on, on, on Linux. So uh, we want to bring uh, that uh, on parity with Windows. And the third motivation was uh, interoperability. Again, uh, it's hard to, um, to use WMI, because everything's SOAP. Uh, so um, the big emphasis here is that although we are uh, moving to a different protocol, to a different implementation, we are trying to keep uh, as much backwards compatibility as possible. Uh, but there's some stuff that simply doesn't make sense uh, uh, in the new protocol. 
For example, all the uh, uh, parameter sets to use a sim session, those will have to change, uh, no more sim sessions. Um, I think we have a few parameters for the test computer, uh, for the computer name. Those uh, will also go away. Instead, we'll take a, a URI, uh, an endpoint. Um, and also emphasize that that REST service itself doesn't have any dependencies. We are not using uh, IIS or Apache or anything else. It's uh, self-contained. We are making a big effort to make this uh, cross-plat. Um, again, today we have two different implementations. Um, that is an engineering, uh, creates engineering overhead because we, we need to maintain two different source codes. Uh, they have diverged. Um, we, we, we need to, uh, and, and, and the uh, uh, functionality of Linux is uh, lagging behind uh, Windows. So we want to support, to um, resolve all those issues. Uh, we are focusing initially on uh, Windows and Linux. We have had a, a few questions about uh, support for Mac, but uh, Mac uh, is not in, in scope uh, initially. But at least uh, Windows and Linux we should have. So um, before we continue, um, I, I, I want to open uh, to see if, if you guys have uh, any questions. Again, the, the, this is the overall, uh, the, overall, the overall team of the work that we've been doing. Make uh, uh, DSC self-contained, lightweight, uh, open it uh, using REST, uh, and um, make it cross-plat. Those are the three big teams. Uh, lightweight, fast, easy to install, um, cross-plat, and uh, very performant. Um, yes. With uh, making DSC lightweight, uh, we've all experienced the capabilities of it. Uh, how does that play against uh, our security requirements? How do we, uh, how would we address ensuring that only the correct administrators use use the product that we develop? Or is that another subject? Um. No, no, no. Let, let me see if I understood correctly. Um, um, b b basically, what we are doing underneath is um, uh, using Windows Integrated Authentication. So we know who is connecting to that endpoint. And we we'll let you through only if you are an admin, which is the same as uh, the current implementation. Yep. Um, we are also um, considering using uh, SSH uh, on Linux. So over there, as long as you have a key, uh, you would be able to, to, to connect. But yes, yeah, so security is critical for this. Uh, DSC needs admin privileges for, um, to do its work. And that service that I show you is running a local system. So we need to be very careful on uh, the, uh, uh, implement the uh, uh, authentication part. And the other, the other side of it is we need to be very careful uh, on the authentication trying to minimize the impact on the user experience. Uh, that is one of the motivations to use uh, Windows integrated authentication. So you don't have to do an, an extra logon to, to that service. Uh, Windows will take care of it. Perhaps. Does it, does it uh, work well with side by side with the existing LCM, Server 2016? It, it's already side by side, but uh, we are, we still need to do some design. What happens if you have two different configurations side by side, uh, which one wins. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you can tell the command, you, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the endpoint is gone. But uh, potentially, you just uh, have the service listening in, in two ports, and the command can, can switch to one or the other. But uh, our, our uh, thoughts are about uh, one configuration tells you to do something with the system, and the other configuration tells you something different. Uh, like uh, in partial configurations, right? We have that um, conflict resolution, we call it. Uh, so that we need to uh, still define for side by side. But to, today, uh, it's already side by side, and one of our scenarios actually um, uses it. It's a restricted scenario, so we're too worried about conflict resolution, but we, uh, we still need to, to resolve that. 
So it's, it's a new uh, rest endpoint. So you've got a new port that you're listening to that rest service on. I'm sorry? So you've got a new port yeah. that you've got that rest service running on. Yeah. So uh, in a lot of environments where you've got a lot of firewalls, the idea for access would be that you'd still come through your PS remoting session and then access that port from the local machine. Uh, since we don't run dependencies on uh, PowerShell, we're thinking more SSH rather than, than remoting, yes. Uh, our initial scenarios is uh, localhost, so everything is happening internally. Uh, if we do HTTPS, uh, 433 probably is already open on the firewall, uh, and um, the other alternatives is SSH. So will there be any expectation that you'll need those ports opened or it will come through SSH? So you'll be using those existing ports? Uh, if we go HTTPS, then there will be an expectation that it's uh, open. Um, if not, um, uh, SSH would, would, do, would do it. Yeah. Uh, we, okay. we can probably support both. It's uh, still a discussion uh, inside the team where, where we go first. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, there, there was another question over here. Yeah, I have yeah. a couple of questions. Um, yeah. So, just incorrect me if I'm wrong, this is mm. kind of my understanding basically, but it seems like you guys have kind of done away with a bit of the Russian doll sort of layering of different protocols and tech stacks to, from the, you know, the entry level end, endpoint for LCM through the system and back out, right? So are you using MI APIs at this point? Is that, or am I APIs being deprecated or? Uh, we are still using it, but uh, that was never exposed to you guys, uh, was it? We I mean, internally we use it. We looked at integrating using MI at one point, uh -huh. uh, just to reduce some of the complexity with the layering. We're, you know, we're in Puppet, we implement. Uh, you know, an integration with DSC, obviously. I see. Um, so we had looked at it at one point, but it was mm. kind of a, a, bit, a bit of a lift to do the MI integration. But uh -huh. just wondering if what the story is for that long term. Is that being completely deprecated and replaced with this? A MI, you mean WMI? Uh, the Management Infrastructure APIs. Yeah. Uh, we, we WMI, MI. Yeah, uh, MI we used to go to connect with the uh, resources. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that would stay. Like, uh, for example, the uh, C++ resources still go through, through MI. Okay. Yeah, I saw, uh, I saw I, one of your slides, there's an MI resource still in the... Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I got you. I, I was thinking in the, in the uh, communication of the uh, DSC commanded client to the DSC service, where we're talking about the communication of the engine with the resources. Yeah, no, that, that, that is not REST. That, that communication stays as, as it is today. Uh, so, yeah, MI. We, we stay with MI. And, and the, uh, the other question I had was, I assume that this also would now remove the need for opening up HTTP endpoint for WinRM, for the current requirement. For yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, would, uh, we, we wouldn't need, we wouldn't need right. WinRM anymore. Service, right. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I hope that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, uh, all of this is work in progress, no final decisions. Uh, Kerberos is in, in sight as well, but uh, uh, again, um, um, in, initially we are local only, then we want to open via Windows Integrated Authentication SSH. Kerberos is uh, definitely uh, in, in, in view. Uh, it'll be a staged approach. Uh -huh. Uh, and there was another question over here. Um, a little bit off topic, but is uh, the on-prem pull server being worked on you know, like side by side with this at all, or is that? Kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stand in front of the firing squad. Yeah. Oh, let me turn the volume back. Um, yeah. it, it, it's related to the side by side. Yeah. So I have discussion. a I have a blog post, um, but I'll just go ahead and share it. So. I'm, it's either going to go up today or tomorrow. Um, so we have two things for a pull server. One is with this current branch release. So if you go out and register for Windows Server Insiders, I think it's build 17623 is out there now. Um, combined with the latest, actually there's still pending merge of the XDSC web service resource, uh, then we will have full support for a SQL Server as the backend database behind pull server. Uh, so that opens up a couple of scenarios. You can do high availability. Uh, I've tested three front-end pull servers pointing against a single instance of SQL, and it just needs a SQL instance. It doesn't care 
if it's one box or clustered or whatever. It just needs to see a SQL instance. It's just a connection string. Um, and really, it's, it's one file difference and a web.config difference, really, to make that work. Um, after that, so we, we kind of feel like, so obviously the direction's Azure Automation and community, right, and, and open source everything. Um, so once we have SQL support on the back end, I don't know yet what our performance numbers are in terms of how many nodes you know, we'll support for that. Um, but that's what I want to announce in the blog post is we don't have plans for future features and capabilities to be added to Windows Pool Server. Uh, now, it's on a 10-year support cycle, and it'll still be in the next couple of releases of Windows, because that's the way Windows Server works. You can't just pull something back out. Uh, so it's not going anywhere. It'll still be supported. So in isolated environments, uh, you have the existing pull server, you have push mode combined with pull server if you wanted to do away with, like, so if, usually the big issue is certificate management. Uh, so if you wanted to use push so that certificate uh, management was a little bit simplified and still use pull server for reporting, which I think will be the big deal with SQL because you get the advantage of the entire SQL ecosystem of reporting tools. Um, and for module delivery, then that would still make sense. Uh, and then, of course, there's Tug, which I think is the biggest open source project around. Uh, we, we fully documented the protocol. Um, so Tug is a good option uh, if you want to contribute to a project and <coughs> kind of take pull server in your own direction. Uh, there's also Trek, which is a Node.js implementation, but honestly, it's super, super early, and um, we just haven't found the right people to get behind that yet. Uh, and then there are some MVPs. I think this would be really cool who are interested in creating a GitHub repo focused on extending Windows pull server. So the idea would be like Ben Gallens has created uh, like a wrapper for Windows pull server that handles certificate management and things like that. So uh, he's interested in creating a GitHub repo to just say, hey, here's a bunch of community tools that bring pull server closer in line with things that are happening in Azure. Um, but that'll be completely community driven and I'd be happy to be a contributor, but I'll probably let somebody else be a maintainer. Um, so yeah, that'll probably get published either tomorrow or Friday um, for Pulse Server. So if you feel strongly about that, I'm happy to take the bullets and have a conversation with you. It's just our direction is to put all of our, you know, as, as many hours as possible into moving fast uh, in Azure Automation. So, yes, ma'am. Multi-thread, as in... Uh, so, like, so like I know what you're talking about. To have configurations run, uh, to be able to say you want us to run serially or to allow parallel execution of resources. Uh, that that, that uh, discussion happened as uh, recently as two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, one, one, one problem that we have with that is that uh, in the current implementation of, uh, of the LCN, we have a lot of uh, global variables. So um, we need to refactor that code or consider running uh, the two configurations um, uh, out of process in their own processes so that the global state doesn't mess uh, each other. And then we have the issues that the resources in themselves may be uh, tripping into each, or, each other. So uh, for now, we're staying uh, sequential execution until we can have a better story about around uh, out of process execution and what happens when uh, resources, um, or what can we do with resources that uh, uh, conflict between, sh between each other. What is the module Yep. Um, we are going to invest in the uh, resource kit, of course, make it uh, PCOR compatible. And probably we will rely on the community as well. Uh, okay. we, 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 we do have native resources, but they are so internal to uh, the Azure scenarios. I doubt that would be of any use uh, outside. So say you developed like a Python one with the expectation with the new system that you could use that Python one against the system that you know, like, so the Python right now works for Linux. Right. Could you write a Python resource for Linux against Linux? The, 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 we, we, we are going that path. There's nothing preventing us from doing it, I believe. Um, it's just going to be a question of prioritization because it, it, uh, it, um, the testing effort would uh, 
the, it, it, has, it has some impact on, uh, we, we need to create this new infrastructure and uh, so on. But yes, uh, I, um, if we have a, com a common source code and cross plat there should, not, nothing should prevent us from executing PS code on Linux or Python on Windows. Uh, eventually, there was talk about creating an open provider model where you com could come up with your own provider for whatever uh, language, but uh, th that's way in the future. Yeah, and I want to make sure it's really clear for resources. By going with that provider model, um, it means we have that provider for Windows PowerShell, PowerShell Core, Python, C++. The Windows PowerShell provider means, I checked this morning, there's 1,218 DSC resources in the gallery right now. Uh, that means, although we'll have to test all 1,218 of them, but the goal is they just keep working because they're running a Windows PowerShell and this version of DSC can just execute in that context. Uh, and then for PowerShell Core, it has uh, this really nifty built-in variable set of is Windows, is Linux, is OS 10, so, uh, or is Mac OS. So that means when it, uh, we sit down to construct resources that are designed to be cross-platform, PowerShell actually knows where it's running. So we can just do conditionals inside those resources and say, if you're in Windows, then is Windows equals true, then do this. And if you're is, is Linux equals true, then do this. Um, so this will be really cool resources to create. And we'll just do it the same way we have been. Uh, I, I think probably, we haven't said, I, I think what we should do is sit down in the community calls and uh, just talk through, like, do we want to provide updates to the existing resources? Do we want to create new resources? Um, you may have seen, I'm a big fan of getting rid of the X uh, and just having an expression of quality and then have in your readme file, you express whether or not it's supported and where support comes from. I think it's a much better model. Uh, so. I think we just keep moving that direction, right? And we just do things like, if we want to rewrite uh, certificate DSC or something, then uh, right now it's X certificate. That might be a good time if we go through that name change to implement cross plat or something like that. That'd be an interesting one. Yep, if sure. I meant, so with the, the JSON, um, with the LCM with hitting against the rest, you don't have to compile that file. You just hit the rest of the code, which kind of mimics what invoke DSC resource does, but it, so does it, do you still have to have that one document or can you have, I assume you can have several different snippets of JSON and then you would just recall against the API. So like right now you have a moth that has your entire server config, you could switch to parcels if you wanted, but then that runs all at once. Uh, what if you wanted separate, basically to mimic a partial. You could do that with JSON, right? You just have to call the API several times. Well, the, the, the uh, JSON would be just a uh an alternative to express the same thing as in MOF. So whatever you could do in MOF today, you could do with JSON when, when, when we do the, uh, the implementation. Um, as far as executing um, different pieces. Um, well, you wouldn't really need to at that point, because then it would just be. You yeah. Know, it, you, it, you, you basically strip out the process of having to compile and distribute mm, mm, uh, a file. Mm. Oh, right. So. Yeah. I think that's awesome. I just want to bring that up. I think that's really cool. Yeah. yeah uh, and uh, again, uh, if we go JSON, uh, for those of you who use uh, Azure templates, the idea is to write inline your configuration, no need for compilation. Yeah. You would just have a property under your extension. You would just have your configuration right there, Nate. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's theoretically, that would be awesome. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the goal, right? Head that direction. <laughs> cool. Uh, there's a couple of things I wanted to touch on before we close up, and we can keep questions open. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, and I, I should mention, the only thing we didn't touch on, uh, so we're still continuing on with Invoke DSC resource. So uh, as we move forward, the partnerships we've had with Puppet and Chef and others is just as important as it's always been. So if you're using the community resources together uh, with Puppet, Chef, Ansible, whatever your choice is of, of configuration tools outside of DSC, that's just as important as ever. We want to keep that going. Um, and I meet frequently with people from all of those companies. So, uh, As far as taking it open source, uh, I want to go through this in, in phases. It's super important to me that we don't just take this code base, put it in GitHub, and then be like, yay, we're open source, and then close the door. Right? That would be awful. Um, 
So I really want to take a, a fairly conservative approach to make sure that the day the code is checked in, the team is ready to respond as you guys file issues and pull requests and things like that, and that the proper test automation has been written so that if you submit a pull request, you get meaningful feedback uh, so that you can interact in a self-service way through that process and not just get you know random comments back. Um, so what I want to do, probably, I, honestly, I was hoping I could get this done by this week. Uh, I didn't, but it'll be, be github.com slash Microsoft slash DSC is where it will end up. Uh, within the next few weeks or so, uh, what I want to do is make that a public repo and collaborate with the community on the staging of the repo. So we're going to take the docs from the PowerShell uh, project around um, documenting the product, providing guidance, providing style guide, providing a process that you can expect to follow on how to submit quality issues and sub, uh, submit pull requests um, that, are, that are as interactive as possible. So we want to get all of that stuff staged and we'll just leave a source directory empty for now. Uh, and then sometime this summer, I don't want to get aggressive about setting dates, um, then we'll celebrate a code check-in. Uh, that will be probably something like an alpha and then uh, we'll just keep working together. So we'll get through a process of declaring beta. Uh, what I, this is again a soft uh, thing, but I would hope to say by the time we hit beta, that would be a signal that we can start testing resources with this. Obviously people are gonna start testing resources against alpha too, so, but I would like to hit a code quality point where we get to beta and say, yeah, we, we're seeing good numbers around what's working around community resources, so we've got a good beta, and we can start you know, narrowing focus and work towards a release candidate and then a general availability. Uh, I, don't, I definitely can't put dates. It's, it's not that I don't want to, it's that it would be uh, irresponsible for me to put a, a hard calendar date on a general availability. Um, but once we hit uh, open source and we're working together on this, then that's where the README comes in, and we just keep having like the monthly call and working together and setting that. It would be great if we can get this done by the end of the calendar year, but I don't wanna say that we will because who knows what could come our way two months from now. Uh, but that's what we're thinking is, is get this thing open source as soon as possible, and then it's transparent, and you can see progress, and you can see what's happening um, and work together with us, so that's super important. Anything you'd like to add on that? Okay. Uh, I did want to point out, so this code base, as far as the quality is concerned and what we've seen so far, so obviously, you know, uh, we're very happy to be using DSC throughout Azure, and um, everybody assumes that that means, oh yeah, Azure Automation DSC, right, That's where, and DSC extension, that's where we're using DSC. Uh, the last year, you guys haven't really seen too much in the way of updates to LCM and like new features in DSC. Uh, Actually, I do want to make on that point before I go to the Azure stuff, I'm taking everything from user voice, that's a request for DSC, and I'll be staging those as issues in the new repo so that they don't get lost and so they're surfaced there so people know what to contribute to. Uh, and, and if you feel like the top of the list is things like uh, maintenance windows and running in parallelization <laughs> and things like that, like none of those requests that you've submitted previously are getting lost, they're all getting brought forward. Uh, so as we, we've had, this progress of developing this in Azure, what you haven't seen is that this DSC engine is actually the code behind update management, change in inventory, uh, it's being used uh, in other places in Azure Security Center and OMS. So what's interesting about this, the you know, get, set, test. Get was the first method to get implemented. So uh, there's some additional capabilities there, but effectively throughout these other tools, whenever they need to get information about what's going on inside that machine, they're just using this DSC code base and, and calling get uh, with some additional capabilities to go do that. That's why he keeps mentioning C++ as a provider, because that allows us to go write C++ um, resources for inside of Azure that very small, very fast, you know, that kind of thing, and I hold to that. Um, so anyway, we saw this go, the scale go like crazy. So you know, for Azure Automation, we've got these like tens and tens of thousands of nodes, and then you go to you know things like Update Management, very popular to patch servers, hundreds of thousands of nodes, and then it goes to Azure Security Center, which is super popular, millions of nodes, uh, and this has not been an area where we've had major incidents coming our way, which is super important to the team. If we're responding to supporting a piece of software, it means that that limits the hours we can put towards building new features. Uh, the nice thing about the code that he's written, really haven't had support <laughs> issues coming in around this. So 
Uh, it's not only holding true to the uh, size and speed that he's been looking for, the code quality is just out of this world. Um, so the, I, I mentioned uh, on day one and during the keynote that I like that model that Kubernetes has followed, where uh, Google builds Kubernetes as their container platform, they make it very reliable and you know, really good quality, and then they open source it and work with the community, and then the community sees the benefits of that big commercial investment in cloud scale. That's what I'm hoping to see for DSC. So the reason I'm bringing this slide up is to say, like there's work going on to make this work really well in DSC, or sorry, in Azure, and get, making that quality first class is very important. And as we take this project open source, you get to see the benefits of that, in addition to working with you to bring in the features, uh, and hopefully, by working with the community, we'll even see features that we're not able to get to as an engineering team. So um, I'm really looking forward to watching this process come together. And we didn't need that slide. <laughs> uh, Let's open the floor back up for questions. I think we've got at least a few more minutes. Yeah, we have literally one more minute. So. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, feel free to pull us aside anytime.